<sighs> it's the beginning of a whole new year. Man, I can't believe 2021 went by that fast. <sighs> it's time for a whole new year of looking back through these games and looking at them from a whole new critical eye. Nitpicking these games and finding newfound appreciation or hatred for stuff I've already played. Now I have this thing called Stan- You spoke ill of me. Oh, we're doing this now? How long ago was that? Silence. You shall re-nitpick me. And like me. But how am I supposed to like something I don't like? Like this. What? Oh, shit. She was great and small for your entertainment, and today we're going to be talking about Kirby Star Allies. Now, I talked about this game a couple years ago, and I didn't like... God, it's already been two years. I played this game a long time ago, and I really didn't like it. However, that was two years ago. I still had my buck teeth. So maybe I gave it too hard of a time back then. Maybe I was just too high above Kirby. I mean, after all, my main criticism was that the game was way too easy, and quote, The puzzles in this game are putting me to sleep. Maybe this game isn't as mindless as I remember. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe, maybe I was just too high for Kirby at the time. I thought that since I wasn't challenged that the game was bad and mindless, right? Maybe, maybe that was it. Let's find out. Let's nitpick Kirby Star Allies for Nintendo Switch. So let's start with the opening cutscene. Up in a space station, up in space, a mysterious figure creates a thing that sends dark hearts all over planet Popstar, turning everyone evil, including the mischievous King DDD, and Kirby conveniently getting a good heart, I, I guess, runs off to see what's up, starting the adventure. The opening obviously looks very nice. The CGI is great stuff and looks really good. However, it is outright ruined by the music. Like, don't take this the wrong way. The music is great, but it's not atmospheric. When I was watching this cutscene, it felt like I was watching a demo on the main menu and not the actual opening cutscene. The music is just way too fast and there's just way too much of it. For example, why is there tense music over the part where King Didi is just sitting there waiting for his food? These two things aren't the same level of excitement. The music should be tense here, cut to casual here, then jump scare you here, then slowly fade into menacing music like King DDD is on screen, but no, it's all one track over everything. Come to find out actually, I looked through a couple of cutscenes and found out that most Kirby games have this problem. There's no sense of atmosphere to any of Kirby's opening cutscenes, and it's a real shame because these opening cutscenes are really good well choreographed and just great to watch. How has nobody complained about this? Anyway, I have some other things to say regarding the soundtrack later, but let's kick this nitpick off with the gameplay. I usually talk about presentation first, but for the structure of this particular nitpick, I need to start with the gameplay. Well, it's a Kirby game, a 2D platformer where you suck up enemies and copy their abilities with 28 in total, with a twist. You can chuck a heart at them and then force them to be your friend, as you force them on a perilous journey and then replace them the minute they are of no use to you, then replace them with their brother who was always seen as better than them by his family, and the minute he starts to have an ego, you replace him as well, and the cycle Michael continues over and over and over and <coughs> anyway. So yes, you can befriend almost any character you want, although you can't befriend the Waddle Dees because they can never be friends. Unless they're rich and have a billion dollar parasol, then they're a pimp. The friends can be controlled by either AI or of course, co-op. Yes, a four-player Kirby game where your friends can play as any friend as they so please, as long as you share the love of Kirby, both figuratively and literally. But before you bring your credit card over to Amazon to purchase this game because you want to befriend Waddle Do, well, first off, you're wrong, Dribbly's better, and secondly, this has a bit of a negative effect on the gameplay. The game is designed around co-op, which doesn't sound bad, but the problem is that it's four-player co-op in a 2D platformer, and not just a 2D platformer, Kirby 
which is a game series directed at young audiences. So what happens when you do this? Well, you don't want to have too much puzzle solving in a co-op game because that would be boring. No band of friends wants to spend hours puzzle solving. That can get boring and tedious if not done correctly. But here's the problem. Those puzzle solving elements were kind of the only challenging things for Kirby. So if you take those things out, you get some of the most boring levels in a platformer I have ever played. But it's not just the lack of puzzle solving that makes these levels boring, it's the total lack of platforming. These levels are made for four people to traverse at once, so they can't make claustrophobic condensed levels because they won't fit. And then, and then and then, with the AI control partners being AI controlled, most of the time they'll take out the enemies for you. Not that they're hard to begin with, but it makes them even easier because you got three people who are willing to take them out for you. So mix all three of these factors together and you wind up with a game that has the most mindless, boring, unimaginative, uninspired levels I have ever played in a platformer. Nine times out of ten, I got through what all the four worlds offer without losing a life. And even the times I did die were either because of some weird issue like the friend circle clearly making it to the platform but not landing, or the most case scenario, I just got so brain dead from all these mindless levels that I died from the most simple stuff. And is all that the game's fault? Kinda. I brought this up in my Sonic Heroes nitpick. Whenever I got to Team Chaotix, you had to start collecting things, which is something you did not have to do for any story up until that point. So at times, I would just zone out and forget that, oh wait, I need to be collecting stuff. Gotta restart the level then. It's the same with Star Allies, but more pathetic. When you play something as easy as this game for an extended period of time, your brain just becomes mush and you die to anything at that rate. And not helping with the mushness of the brain is the mushness of this presentation. Now of course, I don't mean the game looks bad, because look at it, of course it doesn't look bad. You can see the jump from 3DS to Switch in spades, it looks really nice. What I mean by the presentation being mushy is that it's generic run-of-the-mill Kirby. Bright colors and stuff, and, and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. But after that hit of, yo! Kirby's on the Switch! The graphics don't wow you anymore because it doesn't push the Kirby series in a new art direction. It's just generic Kirby. The games you've already played on 3DS and even before that, so it just begins to mush and bore you. And I'm sad to say that how I feel about the presentation stems over to the soundtrack as well. Again, it's basic Kirby, except the soundtrack isn't even that good. Okay, okay, of course the soundtracks themselves are good. It's generic Kirby, leading to what I said earlier about the presentation to apply to the soundtrack as well. However, it's a little bit worse because the OST has basically no atmosphere whatsoever. Here, let me give you an example. Listen to this track and then tell me what you think of when you hear it. Okay, now tell me what kind of music you think that level's for. You goof a fire level, of course. And to top it all off, all this mediocrity is only in four worlds. And before you say I can't count because there's clearly seven, that one is just the final boss, so don't even try it. And not to mention, the first world isn't even fleshed out all that much because it's just your basic first area. So really, this game has like three and a half worlds. But this mediocrity doesn't come without its annoyance. For that, let's head back to the gameplay because there are some things I wanted to save until now. So with the friendship system, if you have an elemental ability and a weapon ability, you can combine them to create an elemental weapon ability. And this is actually something that was brought from Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards. And this is cool, However, when you do this, you get a cutscene of your weapon for every single combination. And it's cool the first time. But nitpicker, you only see it once. That's your reward for experimenting. And yeah, you're right. Except for the fact that you see this every time you close and reopen the game. I have gotten more cutscenes for the Fire Sword ability than I have playtime out of Damon X Machina. But all of this meaning that if you have Sword Kirby, Sir Kibble, Bonkers, and Burning Leo, you get three separate cutscenes of three characters just getting their weapon on fire. But oh, you can skip the cutscenes though. Yeah, 
And I didn't figure that out until I just happened to accidentally press the A button. But even if you skip them, it still stops the... But even if you skip them, it still stops the flow of action. It's still annoying. But not as annoying as getting dream friends. You can partner up and make friends with regular Kirby enemies like Knuckle Joe, but more importantly, Dribbly! Dribbly is the best, alright? I don't want to hear it. Look at this majestic, amazing creature. <coughs> Sorry. But see, you can also partner up with the big name characters from the Kirby franchise. Characters like Meta Knight, Bandana D, King DDD. And while speaking about King DDD, like look how he looks in Planet Robobot and then look at him now. Name a bigger downgrade. Anyway, in order to get dream friends, you need to use the front friend wand to summon them in a roulette style selection. Except it's actually not a roulette style selection. Literally wait one second for the selections to go through it all, then it just scrolls through by itself. Why? If you're gonna make it roulette style, make it roulette style. If you're not, then let me pick which character I want. This annoys the absolute hell out of me and I don't know why. It's such a pointless method of doing things that it's just clearly here to be annoying and nothing but. Ugh, this game is the worst! Alright, let's discuss bosses. Ah, this game is the best! Okay, but seriously though, in Kirby Star Allies, you face many foes like the returning Wispy Woods, the three Mage Sisters, the aforementioned King DDD, Meta Knight, and so on. So, what's in common with all these boss fights? Well, since you have four players, you just gang up on the boss and therefore you win! Again, it all goes down to that mindless game design. It doesn't feel like these bosses were designed for four-player co-op. You literally just gang up on them and they are dead no matter what. And by the way, I know y'all are saying like Kirby boss fights are so easy and all, but I'm speaking all this in the context of these being Kirby boss fights. So the fact that Kirby boss fights are already easy to begin with literally makes these pushovers. And yeah, sure, I may be low on health after every single boss fight, so you're saying, Well, Nitpicker, you're playing mindless, so you're losing out on health. Yeah, it's just a shame that you get constantly rewarded with extra health, serving no punishment towards playing like this. If you're low on health after a boss fight, don't worry about it. You'll constantly be rewarded with health and even extra lives during the end goal minigame. So by all means, go wild and just keep hitting that boss and put as much thought as the devs probably did. I know I'm dogging on this game a lot for its lack of challenge and overall mindless gameplay, and I know you all are screaming at me that Kirby is aimed to be an easier franchise. And yes, that's okay and fine, I have no problems with that. But Kirby is not this mindless. I played Kirby Triple Deluxe, and I do specifically remember dying to that game for actual legitimate reasons. And the bosses were kind of fun! And this is just Kirby Triple Deluxe. What about the other Kirby games, like Kirby Superstar, said to be one of the best platformers of all time, and <laughs> it had two-player co-op, and it was still fun. And this isn't even getting into Kirby Planet Robobot. I've never played that game other than just seeing it in reviews, but I haven't seen the game in ages, but I distinctly remember there being a metal version of Wispy Woods that was slightly harder than the original, which is probably the coolest thing to ever happen in a Kirby game. I really need to get around to playing that. But speaking as someone who's never played the game, Kirby Planet Robobot is 10 times more memorable than Star Allies. While it is appealing to play as these characters from the Kirby franchise, it's not worth it that the difficulty suffers so much for that feature. But hey, I guess all this is mostly pointless, right? I mean, after all, this game is priced fairly at like, what, $30, $40? So I guess that's not too bad. Wait a minute. No, it wasn't. This game was $60, the same price as Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. The game is nowhere near deserving of that price point. $60 for like four worlds? God, nah, no, no. Honestly, I feel like this game would be pretty okay if it was priced at 30 or 40, but no. That's the problem I have with Nintendo's library of games. Honestly, I feel like this game would be pretty okay if it was priced at like $30 or $40, but no. Because everything that comes out of Nintendo has to be a premium price for no other reason than it being a premium price, this game suffers a lot from that. I do think this game is very mindless and boring. But I also think that this game would be fine as a tossable $30 co-op romp, but at $60, no way I can recommend that. I thankfully got this game at a discount on $40 on Amazon, but that doesn't make me happy, because I could have either gotten this, or a game that is actually worth my time. And all of this, without mentioning the fact that the game was incomplete at launch. A lot of people are calling this out about Nintendo recently, but a lot of Nintendo's games on the Switch, with the most recent example being Mario Golf Super Rush, a lot of them 
them release in a complete lack of content state. Kirby Star Allies was certainly no exception to this, because at launch, we only had three dream friends at launch? Two of them being bosses already in the game, being basically copy abilities, and the other just being the spear ability with a bandana on a waddle dee? These are really cool characters to have as dream friends. Some even really deep cuts like Marks from Kirby Superstar or even Gooey from Kirby's Dream Land 3, the character nobody played as. <laughs> These need to be unlocked over the course of the game, extending playtime. But no! In fact, when you start a brand new save file or boot up the game for the first time, these characters flash you before you even have a chance to start the story mode. They didn't even bother trying to hide the new characters from new players who never even heard of the game before. It's so lazy and has no pride or showmanship. If there was any game to use as a point of reference for Nintendo's finish it later approach to game output on the Switch, this is 1000% that game, and many people do. And not to mention, by the time those characters were released, people stopped giving a shit. This game was released in March 2018, and the final update came in November later that year. By that time, everyone was already bored of the game, and nobody, not a single soul, cared anymore to play the game just for fucking Susie. Ugh, this game infuriates me. I I'm sorry. This has to be one of the most unimaginative games I played in some time. A game with lack of pride or showmanship or anything, really. And it sucks because this is... Kirby, a franchise all about imaginative worlds and fan service and this and that and the other. But no, to be honest, not only is this one of the worst games on the Switch, it's quite possibly one of my least favorite video games of all time. Not because it's a buggy, unplayable game, because it isn't, don't misunderstand me, but because it's boring, lazy, mindless, generic, lacking of ambition, and just a bad game. Not a broken one, it's still a bad one. I was going to end it here, but let's see what they added in the most recent update. They apparently added an extra mode called Heroes from Another Dimension. Let's give it a shot. Oh my gosh. This is what I'm talking about. Why wasn't the rest of the game like this? The levels are so much more claustrophobic and you really got to keep up with your teammates or else they'll... There's certain areas designed around certain power-ups and dream friends. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Sadly though, from what I can tell, this mode does seem to be kind of short. I could be wrong, but as it stands, it looks like it is. I couldn't finish the mode in time for this nitpick because I gotta keep things rolling, and really, the story mode is the main mode of the game, that's what matters. But yeah, this is more like it. If you guys want, maybe I could stream this mode and we can see whether it's good or not. I'd love to. If this video does well, maybe I'll do it in March or something. Let me Make sure to let me know. Well, at least this video ended on a positive note, I suppose. It doesn't save the game or anything, but, you know, at least it's something. But on a serious note, I really don't think this game is that great. Maybe, maybe for kids who's, like, trying to get into platformers, I guess? But even then, I still don't think this is worth the asking price. And, and even then, I think Super Mario Odyssey is a great game for all ages, so I think you should just, you know, get that. I, I don't, I don't know. Like, if you're a massive Kirby fan, Maybe this is good, but that's all I can recommend this game to. I don't think this is worth anyone else's time. I think you should try the other Kirby games, like Kirby Planet Robot or Kirby's Triple Deluxe, you know, games like that. And again, there's the older ones, like Kirby Superstar, you know, I, I think there's those games. I think you need to try those out. <sighs> Maybe as your first Kirby game, but I think this would just leave a really bad impression. I mean, a lot of times, Kirby is known for being for young children. There's this running joke how Kirby's just for little kids. Games like this are kind of that reason why people think that. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Got a bunch of great content in the works. And I'll see you in the next one.